it's Becca and welcome to the Carriage House, a place where you can find cozy inspiration for your hearth and home. Sundays are one of my favorite days that I look forward to here at our home out in the country. For us, it's a day full of peace and play, a day full of gratitude, reflection, and preparation, inspiring to give us the courage to approach the new week with hope and optimism. Sundays are like a bridge, a bridge from the previous week of living our life until the following Sunday comes where we prepare to cross yet another bridge. So I'm glad you're here with me today as I share my little traditions and rituals of the day that we call Sunday. So although my husband and I greet every day with a nice cup of fresh coffee, we like to start our mornings by using our little pour over coffee maker. Ever since I made my first cup of coffee pour over style, I could not go back to anything else. But just like prayers, it's also nice to try and devote time in the morning to just one single task and just simply appreciating life. Another Sunday ritual of ours at home is tending to our garden. After we let our chickens out to roam about their day and after I feed and give them water and scraps from the dinner the night before, I spend a little time in our garden before the summer begins to heat up the day. And again, even though I tend to the garden every morning, I tend to spend a little more time caring for our flowers, vegetables, rock gardens all on Sunday. I'll weed if it needs to be weeded, and it almost always usually does. If anything needs extra care, extra watering, nourishing, harvesting, or planting, this is the day I normally take the time and do. also try and bake on Sunday, whether it's homemade muffins for breakfast or a pie for dessert later on in the day or after dinner. For me, there's just something comforting and calming about baking, something from scratch in the kitchen, as long as the little ones aren't being too crazy. This morning I'm making homemade rhubarb tea scones, and I'm wanting to use as much as our rhubarb in the upcoming weeks as possible because the stalks tend to become a little tough as midsummer approaches. And I'm hoping to try to make homemade rhubarb jam next week, but we'll see. I need to start turning my focus on lesson planning 
and, and homeschooling in the fall because I do have a new student this this year in addition to my two oldest children and it's our four-year-old son Gunner who you saw swinging earlier but I love lesson planning for preschool it can be just fun and lighthearted. But these scones are so delicious and they're gluten-free and I made this recipe a long time ago for my daughter who has celiac disease but if you don't have fresh rhubarb you can always use dried cranberries or any fruit for that matter but the cranberries have a similar tart flavor that rhubarb has but I'll leave the recipe down below for you if you'd like to try them out Most wonderful and comforting sweet aroma filled the kitchen air as the scones were baking in the oven. It's been a beautiful morning with its simplicity and purpose and I try to remind myself these few words of wisdom as the day moves forward that a happy home is more than a roof over your head. It's a foundation under your feet and very few burdens are heavy if everyone lifts. Sundays are also a day of putting groceries away. We try and stock up for about two weeks with an occasional farmer's market pickup for fresh produce to get us by until the next large grocery haul. But I'm really looking forward to having our own garden bringing its own bounty. A lot of hard labor was put into it. I'm hoping to see fresh broccoli soon, carrots, beets, peppers, tomatoes. I think there's eggplant out there, squash, zucchini, and cucumbers will hopefully be making their presence in the weeks to come. I just only wish I could share it with all of you.
I also love to take the time to prepare a Sunday supper for all of us, however humble or glorious it may be. Dedication to cooking and eating seems like an act of loving kindness, and it involves all beings from insects, pollinating blossoms, all the way to the hands who sow and harvest the crops, and to those that prepare the meal and share it together.